Uh, hi everyone, welcome. Uh, this is week 13. This is the end of the new material um, in our in our class here. So um, this is uh, so this is the week we're going to learn about bivariate analyses. And just as I did a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to be switching back and forth between PowerPoint and Excel and Word. So um, there may be some uh, some some blips in the video as I you know as I start and stop things to um, uh, to, to switch things around. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is switch over to the, um, the data analysis assignment. And so what I've done, um, I've copied this right out of the syllabus and I've put it in another Word document for you. Um, there were actually a few mistakes in the copy in the syllabus. And so I just fixed them on this one. Um, but what we're going to do today is actually work through, um, uh, the skills or the things that you need to do to answer question um, C, uh, question D, and then question E. Um, so we're actually we're going to use the data um, that that the same data and and uh, the same variables and everything. Um, and then your task will be to finish the analyses with D. Uh, actually, finish the analyses for D and E, and then and then um, answer question F, which is a a brief paragraph describing um, uh, the results from from these different things. So, if you watch this uh, video in its entirety, you'll be able to get, I think, a good start on the um, the statistics assignment for um, for this week. Excuse me. Um, so, um, so just before we get into this, what? Um, Let's just run through a couple of things real quick. So I'm going to switch back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation here. So we're going to do a few more Excel-oriented uh, things today. I'm going to show you how to sort data. We're going to um, we're going to uh, have to cut, copy, and paste um, data in arrays. Uh, we'll talk about that real quick, and then we're going to talk about making and formatting uh, tables. Um, this again is the um, that same chart from a couple of weeks ago where uh, we were talking about different levels of measurement. Now we're not going to talk about all of these, um, all of these different uh, tests in Excel this week. We're only going to talk about a couple of them. We're going to talk about uh, Pearson's R, we're going to talk about a t-test, and we're going to talk about a chi-square. Um, and those are the three tests that you need to be able to complete the um, the data analysis assignment um, real quick. So that was the t-test, the Pearson's R, and the chi-square. So uh, just moving on here, um, let's talk about the, we'll talk about the t-test here first. And so if we remember um, our, uh, our, our conversation from the other week, um, what we're really doing in, in any kind of statistical analysis is we're comparing the null hypothesis with a research hypothesis. We're trying to figure out which one there's more support for in the data. Um, remember that we can reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, and by rejecting the null hypothesis, that means we're sort of embracing the research hypothesis. Um, so we don't necessarily use those same terms when we're talking about testing statistics, but that's sort of what's going on in the, in the, in the background. Um, and that, that's sort of the logic behind things here real quick. So the t-test is what you're going to use to respond to, uh, question D in, um, in the homework for this week. So that would be, that would be this one, analyze the relationship between the following pairs of variables. Um, so you'll need to do three t-tests and I'll show you how to do one. Um, and, and then you'll be able to apply those same, uh, those same procedures to the others. So when we do a t-test, what we're doing is we're really comparing the mean score, uh, for, uh, with one group of people to the mean score, that same mean, um, but for a different group of people. And I'll, I'll tell you sort of what the data mean here in a second when we get to it. Um, the, the mean score that we're trying to compare is the dependent variable, and that has to be at the interval or the ratio or the scale, scale level data. And then our independent variable is dichotomous. It has to be nominal. 
Um, and and I'll, again, I'll show you an example here in a second. But what we basically need to be able to do with that independent variable is divide people into two categories. Um, so you know, you could pick, you could sort of think about any two categories, right? People born in the U.S. versus people born in Canada. Um, people with um, people with an MSW versus people without an MSW, right? There's lots of meaningful ways that we could we could sort of uh, categorize people, and maybe we want to compare, you know, compare scores for some reason. So, um, the um, the example I'm going to show you here, slide seven, is actually something I have to take out. Um, um, so this is, uh, this is sort of the, um, the example here real quick. Um, what we're going to use is something called the, uh, evidence-based practice scale. It's abbreviated EBP in, in the data. Um, and there's three subscales. I'll show you that in a second, but the one that we're going to work through uh, as an example is, uh, evidence-based practice familiarity. That basically means a person's familiarity with, uh, with evidence-based practice and the, the grouping variable or the categorical variable that we're going to use that, that independent variable is going to be whether or not a person has a BSW. So our independent variable is, is is either having a BSW or not having a BSW. That's a yes or no. That's a categorical, right, or nominal variable. And then our dependent variable is going to be a scale variable. Uh, it's going to be uh, evidence-based practice familiarity, which is a scale variable. So let me switch over to uh, to Excel, and I'll tell you this here, in a, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll talk more about this. Okay, so so here we are in uh, in Excel, and this is the data. Um, the, the name of the file is DA uh, assign to data. Uh, I don't know why I called it that, but that's what I called it. Um, and that's available on UB Learns. Um, and this is, so this is the data that you're going to use to, um, uh, for the, for that second data analysis assignment. A um, couple of variables across the top, case ID, BSW, years, practice, area, mental health, population, setting, respond. Uh, EMP status, and then EBP familiarity, EBP attitudes, and EBP intentions. Um, uh, there is a codebook as well. Um, I don't have that open, but there is a codebook, uh, so they can tell you what these different things mean um, um, uh, as, you're, as you're sort of working through this. Um, so, uh, here's, okay, so here's the first thing we're going to do. What we need to do um, is is compare whether or not people with a BSW have higher scores on this EBP famili familiarity um, variable than than uh, people who do not. So to do that, we're going to use a t test, like we said a couple of minutes ago, um, and we can do a t test with uh, syntax if we wanted to. Um, there's also a, um, a an Excel add-in that we can use that will actually do most of the work for us. And let me show you how to get to that. So uh, I'm on a Mac, but the procedure is very similar for those of you who are on PCs. Um, if at any point you get confused, what I would do is is either Google it. Um, um, I'll tell you what to Google here in a second. Um, or, or give me a call and we can, we can, we can troubleshoot. But, uh, we basically need to, to get the, uh, analysis tool pack, uh, for Excel. So to do that, what we do is we go up to tools. Um, we go down to Excel add-ins. Uh, we open that up and then, uh, we click on analysis tool pack. And, and what this does is this provides data analysis tools for statistical an engineering analysis. We don't need the engineering analysis stuff, but we do need the statistical stuff. We hit OK, and now we actually have some additional um, options available to us. Now, one thing you may need to do is actually uh, quit Excel and restart it. Sometimes programs install on on the restart. Um, so if it doesn't if it doesn't come up right away, that might be a good thing to do. Um, I've been kind of messing with this for a while, so mine's already installed uh, here here on my uh, on my Mac. So um, what we have here, so like I said, got a couple of variables. We've got um, 
70 people or so. Uh, so there's 71 rows of data, but the first, uh, the first row is labels. So there's, there's 70 people. Um, and what we need to do is compare, uh, scores. So wouldn't it be nice if we could get this BSW variable somehow to be closer to this EBP familiarity variable? Well, I can show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide a number of the rows that we don't need. So what I've done is I've highlighted, um, basically, I'm sorry, we're going to hide the columns that we don't need. I said rows. I meant to say columns. Uh, we're going to hide the columns that we don't need. So we don't need column C. We don't need column D. Uh, same thing with E, F, G, H, and I. Um, so I've highlighted them all. I'm going to right click them and then I'm going to click hide. And what this does is this actually makes my data a little bit more compact. It makes it a little bit easier to see things. So we're going to sort our data here in a second too. And that's uh, another reason why this will, will make it easier. Now, if for some reason you wanted to unhide these, um, these, uh, columns, maybe there's a variable you need in there, or maybe you hid something you didn't mean to, you can just highlight over the, um, over the, where the columns are collapsed, right click again and click unhide. And that'll, that'll, that'll bring them back. But, for now, what I'm going to do, since I don't need these variables, is, is I'm going to hide them, All right? And that brings things a little bit closer, okay? Um, so, second thing we're going to do here, we need to sort our data. We need to sort our data. So, um, right now, the data is sorted in ascending uh, case ID. Um, and that's often useful because this might have been the way the data was entered or something like that. But we want, what we want to do is put all of the zeros, so all of the people who do not have a BSW, we want to put them first, and then we want all the people who have a 1 or for BSW indicating that they do have a BSW, we want to put them uh, towards the bottom of our data set here. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight, um, and we're going to highlight column, the uh, column B. Um, I'm sorry, we're not going to highlight the column B. We're going to highlight the, uh, the label. Um, uh, we're going to right click it. We're going to go down to sort. And we're going to look at the options real quick. So there's sort A to Z, sort Z to A, uh, cell color on top, font color on top, icon on top, custom sort. Well, these are numbers. We don't have any option that, um, that, uh, that appears to deal with numbers. Well, actually we do because, uh, Excel will apply the same rules, uh, same sort of alphabetizing rules, um, from letters to numbers. So if we want to sort, uh, low to high, that would simply be, um, uh, A to Z. Okay. And it sorted it for us there. I'll show you that again. If for some reason we wanted to sort, uh, one to zero, which would be, you know, perfectly reasonable. That would simply be descending. So that would simply be a Z to A sort. And I'll show you here. All right. So that put all the ones on top. Okay. If we, if we wanted to get our data back to the way it was, or it was sorted by case ID, we would simply do the same thing. We would right click on case ID. We would go down to sort and then we would sort A to Z. And that would put the lowest number at the top, the lowest numbers at the top and the highest number at the bottom. Right. So, so that puts us back to where we were, right? In case ID, we can see that because case ID sort of goes in this ascending number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on and so forth, all the way down to, to 70. Okay. So what we want to do though is sort things. Um, uh, we want to sort BSW, uh, from, from A to Z. Okay. So what this has done is this is actually, um, put all the zeros up here, but it's sort of kept, um, it's, it's, it's kept the case ID. So, um, as, as sort of a secondary, um, as sort of a secondary sort. So, um, within all the BSW zeros, case ID will still, uh, go from, from lowest to high. And then down here, when BSW turns over to one, case ID resets and again goes from kind of low to high. Okay. So, so the reason we do this is we're actually, uh, sort of creating our groups. Remember, a t-test is comparing um, 
one group score to another group score. And so what we've sort of done is, is, is set up our groups. So uh, let me show you next how we do the, how we actually do the test. So remember a second ago, we installed the, uh, the data analysis tool pack. And for me, that data analysis uh, uh, menu is, is under my data uh, tab. Yours likely is too. It, it might be, um, it might be somewhere different depending on the, um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, newness of your, of your Excel program. Um, but, but mine is over here again. I think a Google search would probably tell you where it is. And so, um, we're going to click on data analysis and what, what comes up is, is really a series of, uh, potential t t uh, potential statistical tests that we could use. Uh, put ANOVA on top, correlation, covariance, um, uh, so on and so forth. Bunch of things that, that we aren't going to use, but uh, they are there for you if you ever want to uh, um, get more into this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on uh, t-test uh, colon two sample assuming equal variances. Um, the other, um, the other things are, are things that we're not going to use, but this is what is going to allow us to compare, uh, like I said, the, the score on EBP familiarity, um, across two groups of people. So, so we'll highlight that, um, that statement and we'll click okay. And another dialogue is going to open up. Um, and it says, uh, T test two sample assuming equal variances across the top. There's an OK button and a cancel button. Uh, and then there's a box that says um, variable one range, variable two range, hypothesized mean difference, um, labels, and then output range. And, and there's some radio buttons here um, that that specify where it is our, our output is going to be. So let me let me talk through what these different things mean real quick. Remember, a t-test is comparing the mean of one group to the p to the mean of another group. So that's what variable one range and variable two range mean, right? So variable one range is the mean for the first group. Variable two range is the mean for the second group. Now, what you could do is you could actually type in that array up here if you wanted to. Uh, but Excel also has a nice built-in feature to allow um, allow you to select the boxes um, with your uh, with your mouse and to do that you, you select on the little icon with the arrow in it so what we're going to do here is we're going to um, highlight all of uh, we're going to highlight the scores for all of the people who do not have a BSW right so we click on this little button and then we highlight all of the scores all of the EBP familiarity scores for people who do not have a BSW. Um, and you can see this is why it is useful to sometimes compress the data to hide rows and columns that, that we don't need. In this case, we, we hid columns that we didn't need. But what this did is this put the, the BSW and the uh, score and the EBP familiarity score right next to each other. So it's very easy for me to see where to stop highlighting okay and i'm going to stop highlighting here and what this did is this automatically transferred that array up into excel i hit enter right and then i return back to that same uh, that same menu and what i need to do next is input the array into variable two range and that's simply the score on ebp familiarity for people who do have a bsw right so i click on that same button and now for all the people who have one in the BSW variable that means I highlight their EBP familiarity score right it automatically inputs it into um, uh, into into it already automatically inputs the array into Excel hit enter right we can leave the hypothesized mean difference blank. We don't need to click on labels because we've not highlighted uh, any part of an array that includes a data label. We want our alpha to be set at 0.05. Remember from last week, that's typically what we set our alpha level at. 
in my version of Excel, that, that alpha at 0.05 was already filled in. Yours might be or might not be, but uh, either way, put in a 0.05. And then uh, under output, output options, um, we need to tell it where to put our output. Um, so you can, you can specify a range if you wanted to. I like to put in a new uh, worksheet ply, but that's just the way I work. You could also tell it to put it in a new workbook. Um, I don't like to put it in a new workbook. I just like to put it in a new worksheet ply, right? So after you've hit all that, um, uh, you can hit OK, and it will run the comparison. Right. And so for me, what it did uh, is it actually spit me right over to um, that new page in my workbook um, and things are a little compact. So let's stretch it out a little bit here. Just make it right. Make it so we can see everything and let's take a look at what we have here. So. Variable one, variable two, we get a mean for variable one. It looks like the mean for variable one is 30.9512195, a lot of decimal points there. It looks like the mean for variable two is 29. We get a variance score, we get observations, we get pooled variance, hypothesized mean difference, we get DF, which stands for degrees of freedom, and then we get our T statistic, okay? Let's talk about, and then we get some, uh, some some uh, some p values here. So let's talk about what these different things mean. Okay, first thing that we probably need to figure out what's variable one and what's variable two. Well, this corresponds exactly to what we put into our um, our uh, our our menu uh, when we were actually doing the analysis. So variable one is evidence-based practice familiarity score for people who do not have a BSW. Variable two is evidence-based practice familiarity score for people who do have a BSW. So what's interesting is typically on, on this measure, the higher the score, the more familiar a person says they are with evidence-based practice. So this is kind of interesting. This In this data set, which I, again, I made up, but um, in this data set, people who do not have a BSW are actually saying that they're a little bit more familiar with evidence-based practice than um, people with a BSW, right? And we know that because their mean is a little bit higher. Their mean is 30.95, very close to 31, while people who do have a BSW are saying that their average score is a 29. So they're, the people without a BSW are about two points higher. Okay. Variance, um, and we'll skip for a second, but observations, right? So observations is simply the number of people in each group. So in this data set, there were 41 people without a BSW, but there were 29 people with a BSW. If we add up 41 and 29, we get 70, and that's exactly how many um, uh, rows of data are in uh, are in our, our other um, are in our, our our other workbook page. Okay, um, the the pooled variance, the variance, the degrees of freedom are all used to calculate this t statistic, and then. If you remember from our conversation last week, t is converted to a, uh, a t value is converted to a p value, and this is our p value right here, right? So it's um, it's got kind of a wonky label. That's just uh, sort of one of the idiosyncrasies of Excel. Um, but our our one tailed uh, p value is 0.185, 185268. Uh, so 185 repeats there real quick. Um, the, the, the next line here says T critical, uh, one tail. Um, this would be, uh, what the number, uh, above it would need to be higher than in order for it to be statistically significant. Um, and these last two numbers down here is just another way of converting the, the P value and you can ignore them. Um, for the purposes of, of our assignment right here. So we needed to be, we needed our T value to be higher than 1.67. Um, it's way below 1.67. Um, our T value is, is 0.90. Um, 
And so that, that corresponds to a p-value of 0 0.185, 0 0.19, if we were to use uh, just two decimal points. So we're not even close to statistical significance here. So what does that mean? Uh, do we reject the null hypothesis or do we fail to reject the null hypothesis? I will let you tell me in your write-up for this question. However, here's the next thing we need to do. Um, we need to we need to uh, create a, a table of these results. Um, you don't need to share all of this information with me. There's only only a little bit of the information that we need to do. So let me show you what the table looks like real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll make it. Okay, so we're back in uh, the PowerPoint presentation, and this is what the table looks like. I'm going to show you uh, how to make it here in a second. Um, but the the crucial information to share with me in your in your uh, assignment is the mean for each group, so the mean for the BSW group and the mean for the no BSW group, the T value, and then the P value. And I'm going to show you how we do this here in a second. So I'll switch back over to Excel um, and, and let's make this table. So first thing we do, we're going to just start typing in the uh, the, the values that, that, we, that we want to here. So the the, the variable that we're reporting on is EBP familiarity. Um, I'm going to report the mean for no BSW first, uh, and then I'll report the mean for BSW second. Um, I don't think there's any right way to do this or not, but you could, you know, you could, uh, if you wanted to do it a different way, you could. Uh, we then need to report the T statistic, and then we need to report the P value. Okay, so... Uh, where do we get the mean for EBP familiarity for the no BSW group? Well, recall that was the first variable that we put in, um, uh, the first variable that we put in in our, uh, our point and click dialog in Excel here. So we can copy this variable from over here into the space where we're making our table, right? It, uh, and it, um, it, it copied it right over 30.95 and then a bunch of decimal points after that. All right. Uh, mean for BSW is variable two. So we'll do the same thing. We'll copy it and we will paste it. All right. So we get 29 there. Our T statistic comes from, um, this, um, uh, this piece of information right here, uh, T stat. So we can copy and paste the T statistic from uh, the the one part over here to, to what we're what we're working with over here. Sim, then same thing with the P value. We can copy and paste that over here. Okay. Now this is this is nice. This is a good start. Um, formatting wise, it's a little it's a little sloppy. Um, historically, uh, and sort of in, in the APA tradition, we don't report any more than two decimal points. Uh, so in some of these numbers, we've got lots more than two decimal points. And in one of these numbers, we don't have any decimal points. So we need to sort of standardize this a little bit. And to do that, what we can do is we can format these cells. And this is exactly what we did earlier in the semester that we're just sort of, um, just sort of redoing some of this information. So highlight the cells, right click, go down to format. Okay. Um, I was doing something else earlier, but we go to the, the number tab. And then we just specify that we want to use two decimal points. Uh, only two, we don't need any more than two, but we need, do need two. Uh, and then you hit OK and look what it's done. It's put, uh, it's done the rounding for us and it's eliminated all of the, those, those extraneous decimal points here. Okay, so our mean score for B for no BSW was 30.95. Our mean score for BSW was 29. Uh, our T score was 0 0.90, and that corresponds to a P value of 0.19. Um, I like to uh, just dress this up a little bit with um, with uh, with borders. I'll show you. That's sort of what I'm doing here. Um, Uh, it makes it, it makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, the other thing traditionally that you do is you highlight 
uh, or I'm sorry, you center the, um, the, the, the numbers themselves and then the data labels. So you, you can center those, um, and you can add another line underneath the uh, column labels right there. And then right above the table, you can add a label for the table, uh, just like we've done in the, in, the, uh, in the PowerPoint presentation. And we can call this EBP familiarity score by BSW status. And then we usually put the sample size in there. Sample size in here is n equals 70, right? And then you can just copy and paste this right into a report for me, right? So copy and paste is a, is a right click on anything. And you can always uh, copy and paste between different office products. Okay. So that is, um, that's how you do the first part of question D. Now there are there are three parts to question D. We did EBP familiarity, but I'm asking you to do the same thing with EBP attitudes and EBP intentions. Um, same thing, you're going to compare scores between no BSW and BSW, report the T and the P value. You could, uh, you could construct your tables in one of two ways. You could construct three separate tables for, for each of the EBP variables. You could also just add, um, you could also just add different uh, different um, uh, rows or, or add two more rows to the table that we've just created. So uh, in this next call, uh, cell, you could you could put EBP attitudes and then the one down here, you could put EBP intentions completely up to you, whatever you want to do. OK, second thing we're going to do is the uh, we're going to create a correlation. And this is uh, this is question F. So we just did D. I'm sorry. This is question E. Um, so we just did uh, question D, now we're going to do question E, and we'll go back after this and do question C. So correlation coefficient is the measure of a, a linear relationship or a linear dependency between two variables. It's really how well they go together. Um, correlation coefficient is used when both our independent variable and our dependent variable are, are at the interval or the ratio level. Um, and the uh, the range of possible scores um, for a correlation is, is negative one to, to positive one. Uh, you can't have a correlation that's any higher or lower than 1.0, um, or, or any higher than positive 1.0 or any lower than negative 1.0. It's, it's simply, it's simply impossible. I'll tell you what correlation here means in a second. Um, oftentimes what we do is we're interested in, in looking at correlations between a number of variables and we call that a correlation matrix. Um, a, a quick note, um, correlation does not equal cause, uh, is, is not the same thing as, is causation. Um, um, to establish causation, remember we need to do lots of other things. We talked about this in our fall semester. We need to establish, uh, temporal precedence, right? We need to establish that one variable comes before another variable. We need to rule out, um, we need to rule out possible third causes of variables um, or secondary causes of variables. And then we need to establish that, that the two variables are somehow related. Correlation only does one of those things. It only tells us that two variables are related, right? It says nothing about temporal precedence and it says nothing about uh, 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 possible other variables that, that could account for that, for that cause, uh, for that, for that change in variables. Um, people confuse correlation and causation all the time. Um, it's 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 uh, deeply frustrating, um, but they are they are not the same thing. So, um, just going back a slide real quick. Correlation is simply the measure of a strength of the relationship between two interval variables. That's it. That's all it is. So, as I said, um, there was a there's a range of scores that that goes from negative one to positive one. Uh, negative one is a perfect negative relationship. Positive one would be a perfect positive relationship. Um, uh, if a correlation is zero, that means there's simply no relationship. So the closer it is to zero, that simply means the weaker the relationship is between two variables. The closer you get to one, uh, the stronger that relationship is. Um, I've never seen correlation of one. It, it just doesn't happen. Um, 
uh, typically you see correlations in like the 0 0.3, 0 0.4 range, sometimes as low as 0.2. That's, that's where most variable, uh, most correlations come in. Um, uh, you just don't, you just don't see variables or correlations that are, uh, that are, are 1.0 or negative 1.0. You just don't see it. Um, but typically, you know, in my line of work, I see weak to moderate correlations, but there's some, these are some heuristics right here. Um, um, that, you know, on, on the slide. So 0 0.1 to 0 0.24 is weak. Uh, 0.25 to 0 0.49 is moderate. 0.50 to 0 0.74 is moderately strong. Uh, 0.75 to 0.99 is strong. And then a 1.0 would be perfect. Same thing would be true if, if we were looking at, at uh, negative correlations. Um, it would just be a strong negative as opposed to be a strong positive or a moder moderately strong negative as opposed to a moderately strong positive. Now, we are not going to do uh, any significance testing with our, with our correlation uh, calculation. We're just, going to, we're just going to come up with R. We're not going to come up with a p-value for this. So, so be careful not to confuse the strength of the relationship with the, with the p-value here. Um, um, yeah, so I've got a little bit of uh, a little bit more information uh, here for you. You can use this um, when you're interpreting the 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 correlation between their correlations between the variables that I'm asking you to. Uh, but it, I'll just run through these real quick. Um, when when a correlation is positive, that simply means that two variables move in the same direction. Um, high vari values of one variable uh, sort of co-occur with high values of another variable. Um, um, uh, for example, a computer self-efficacy score and information and communication technology score um, are typically uh, typically are highly correlated. Just as as low values on one variable occur with low values on another variable, uh, when we could make that argument with um, with years of education and income, fewer years of education. Um, is typically correlated with with lower income. Um, when we have a, a negative or inverse relationship, um, all that simply means is that high values on one variable co-occur with low variables on another variable. Um, and so the example I've put on the slide here is value of a car and car's age are often negatively correlated. Um, if you've got a car that's that's uh, um, very old, it's likely to be, um, uh, to be not very valuable. Um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll say that as a person who just left graduate school, I have a, a 2002 Subaru Outback, uh, that is, that is very old and probably not worth an awful lot. Um, uh, so, so that's, that's sort of my, my illustrating example there. On the other hand, someday if I ever had a, you know, a, a brand new car or something like that, then um, I would expect it to be negatively correlated with value, right? So a very new car is likely to be very expensive. Um, um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure you can come up with some other examples as well. Uh, height and weight are often positively correlated, right? People who are taller tend to weigh more. Um, um, you know, the lots of, lots of very, lots of examples I'm sure you can think of. Um, again, don't confuse negative correlation with, um, with, uh, with no correlation. Uh, negative correlation is denoted with a, with a negative sign. But if something's approaching zero, that simply means it's a, it's a, it's a, it's got a weak relationship and it can be weak in the positive direction. It can be weak in the negative direction. So we'll go back to my, um, to my data real quick. Um, all right, so so here we are back at our data. Uh, when I switch back over to Excel, I was on the the um, the results of the t test real quick. So I've just clicked back to my data tab. Now the the um, the um, uh, question uh, D on the uh, the data now. I'm sorry, question E on the data analysis assignment. Uh, asks you to create a table with the correlation of, of several variables. Uh, years of practice. And then evidence-based familiarity, evidence-based attitudes, and evidence-based uh, intentions. So there are four variables there. I'll show you a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to uh, figure out where years of practice is, right? We hit, excuse me, we hit it before. 
getting the hiccups. We hit it, so we need to unhide these rows. Um, we've got our we've got our EBP uh, variables, but we need to figure out where our years of practice thing is. So to unhide something, we highlight the uh, the columns where um, where things are hidden. We right click and we go to unhide, and there we go. So we can see years of practice is over here in column C, and then our evidence based practice variables are over here. It would be nice, it would be nice if we could somehow get years of practice over to uh, the neighborhood of the columns where uh, evidence-based practice attitudes and uh, intentions are. So we can do that actually pretty easily. Highlight the column uh, with years of practice. We'll copy it this time. And then we will simply paste it into column M. And we do that by uh, clicking on column M, effectively highlighting it, and then pasting it, right? Um, uh, there we go. You you might ask why didn't I cut and paste? Uh, I'm not um, I'm not a big advocate of cutting and pasting. Um, I prefer to have uh, backups of of the the columns, uh, backups of the numbers, um, and sort of leave the the data set as as intact as possible. But again, this is personal preference. You can do whatever sort of is is useful for you. Now the other thing is is this is still sorted uh, by BSW. Um, so if we want to, we could unsort. Uh, we could, or we could, we could resort it by case ID, I should say, which is effectively unsorting it from BSW. Um, so we can do that if we want. It actually won't make a difference uh, when we go to do our correlation here, um, but uh, but um, we can we can do that if we want. So I'm going to show you two ways to to calculate correlation. All right, way number one uh, is is with syntax. Right, so what we will do is we will look at a correlation between how about years of practice and EBP intention. So we'll look at the correlation between uh, column M and column L. Let me show you how we do that. So again, when we write uh, syntax or when we write code like this, we can we can do it anywhere you want. My um, um, my habit is just to do things below, but you could do it off to the right if you want. You could do it, you know, you could do it wherever you want. And I also like to label what it is I'm doing in an adjacent cell, just so, just to remind myself of what I'm doing. So we'll do correlation of years. Uh, actually, why don't we just put the variable name YRS practice and EBP intentions right so we'll just label our, our our data there real quick so the the uh, the formula for correlation right formulas always start with the equal sign uh, and then correlation is c o r r e l uh, that calls up the the correlation command in excel and then as with all things we need to look at uh, we need to we need to input the array all right, so our array in this point is actually all of the data in column M and all of the data in column L. So our array here is M2 to M71, right? So it, it highlights it, okay? And we put a comma, and our second array is simply the EBP scores. So it'll be L2 to L71, right? Close paren, hit enter. Here we go. We have a negative correlation. Our correlation, our R value is negative 0.1946026867. Uh, so these are negatively correlated. All that means is that when we have a high score on the years of practice, we're going to have a low score on EBP intentions. Uh, looks like, again, I made this data set up, but but there's some troubling things here, right? So we typically would expect people with more years of practice to be more supportive of evidence-based and uh, evidence-based uh, intentions, but that's not the case. Uh, we saw a similar relationship with BSW, where people with BSW, uh, people without a BSW actually have slightly higher uh, familiarity with evidence-based practice. Again, this is just something I made up, but this, this, you know, 
uh, if this were real data, we could be slightly troubled by, by something like this. So this is the correlation between years of practice and evidence-based intentions. If you wanted to do this with syntax, you would have to run a bunch of other correlations between all of these different variables, right? So there's four variables, uh, and you'd have to figure out how each one of these, you know, right, each one of these is going to have a relationship with, um, with the others. Um, and you could do it that way, and, and if you like writing syntax like I do, that would probably, um, um, you know, probably be fun, but we can also use our, uh, our drop-down menu or, or our, our, our tool add-in. And, and so let me show you how to do that real quick. So we go back to data, right? Because that's where our, our data uh, menu is. We click on data analysis. Um, and this time we're going to go to correlation. Now, when my menu opened up, it was still, um, the, the T test two sample assuming equal variances was still highlighted. That's probably because that's just the last thing I used. Uh, but we'll go back to correlation. We will highlight it. Then we will hit OK. And same thing, a menu, a menu opens up. Okay, our input range. So, so let me read this menu to you real quick. It tells us we're in the correlation menu. We have an input range in that same little icon that helps us figure out uh, uh, what array we're looking at. Uh, it tells us whether we're grouped by columns or rows. This, these data are grouped by columns. Uh, we can, it, it, again, check a box for labels in first row. We're actually going to use that this time. I'll show you in a second. And then output range. Again, my habit is just for, uh, just to put results in a new worksheet. Uh, but you can do whatever, whatever sort of works for you. So first thing we're going to do is we need to highlight all of the arrays uh, from which our data are going to be drawn. So we're going to look at the correlations between four variables. So we need to highlight uh, four rows, I'm sorry, four columns of variables. So I'll do that real quick. Oops. I went a little too far. I didn't mean to do that. We'll just go back up. All right. So I've highlighted everything, and now note this time I've also highlighted our data variables, uh, or I'm sorry, our, our data labels. I've highlighted our labels. So I've highlighted that very top row of information. I'll show you why, what we're going to do. So we're going to hit labels in first row. So we're going to click that radio button. Uh, again, my results, I like to work in a, in a new ply or new, a new worksheet. So I'll leave that one clicked. I'll hit OK. It'll spit us out to... Uh, that that new worksheet and because we clicked on the um, the the button for uh, uh, labels in the first row what it actually did is it labeled the rows and columns of our correlation matrix so uh, so here we go this is our this is our correlation matrix and if if you wanted to do the assignment this way um, you would actually have this correlation matrix all ready to go, and you could just copy and paste this into your into your assignment. Uh, the only thing you would have to do, remember, it's 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 common for us to only uh, report two decimal places, and this obviously gave us much more than two. So you you would want to change this. Now, if you remember our, uh, the previous example, we actually did one by syntax. We looked at years of practice and evidence based intentions. And if you remember when we did this uh, by syntax, our our correlation was negative 0.19, which is which is right here, okay, which is uh, which is which is in our our matrix here. Um, so whenever you do a correlation matrix, um, obviously you have cells where uh, you're looking at the correlation of one variable with itself, um, and whenever a variable is core is whenever you're looking at how a variable is correlated with itself it's going to be perfectly correlated right so you always get a one on the diagonal here uh, but obviously the salient variables uh, are this excuse me the salient values are uh, the decimals that are that are underneath the one here just like that okay so that's um that's how you uh that's how you do um uh question E on the assignment. It would then be up to you to interpret each of these correlation coefficients. You've got a couple that are positive, a couple that are negative. Give some thought to what it is those those mean. All right, I'm going to stop it for a second, go back to uh, go back to our PowerPoint presentation. 
All right, so, so here we are back in our, our PowerPoint. Now, we've answered uh, question D and we've answered question E. We need to go back and answer question C. Uh, question C says, analyze the relationship between population and mental health. Uh, present your results in a table with a title and appropriate uh, labels and footnotes, footnotes, and then a little bit, uh, um, uh, a little bit later on, um, it it asks for um, uh, it asks for p values. So I'll I'll show you how to do that here. Um, I'll, I'll I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But so a chi square um, um, is uh, is used to look at the association between um, an independent variable that's nominal and a dependent variable that's that's also nominal. You can use ordinal variables as well. Um, it, it note that we wouldn't be able to use correlation between this one, although conceptually they're pretty similar, right? We're just looking at at the association between two variables. Correlation you you can only use with interval or ratio variables. You can't do it with nominal or ordinal variables. If you have nominal or ordinal ordinal variables, we need to use a, a chi square. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do this here in a second. So let me go back to uh, let me go back to the data. Um, go back to my oops data screen. Um, and here we go. This one we're going to do with syntax. So there is no uh, there is no point and click method for this one. So we need to look at the relationship between population and mental health. So this is a, this is the code book for the data and population and mental health just happen to be right next to each other. So mental health variable, that question is, do you work in a mental health area of practice? Zero is no, one is yes. And then population variable is uh, basically describe the population you serve or are interested in serving. Uh, one is infants, two is adolescents, three is young adults, four is middle-aged, five is older adult. So what we're essentially doing when we run a chi-score is we're looking at a cross-tab, right? So we're looking at the number of people who would have answered a zero in this variable and a one on this variable. Then we're looking at the number of people who answered a zero on the mental health variable and a two on the population variable. Then we're looking at the number of people who uh, answered a zero to the mental health variable and a three on the population variable, so on and so forth, right? So there are two possible answers here. There are five possible answers here. So if we were to cross tabulate these responses, we have 10 possible categories of people, right? How did I get to the number 10? I simply multiplied the number of responses to the first variable by the number of possible responses to the second variable. So five times two is 10, right? We could have a person who answered a one to mental health and a five to population, right? And that would be obviously a different category of people um, uh, relative, uh, relative to people who maybe answered a zero for mental health and a two for population, right? So let me show you how, how we do this. So the thing that sort of makes, uh, Excel so so amenable to to this kind of analysis is that we're basically working with with rows and columns. That's it, and and uh, and it really sort of lends itself to this kind of cross tabulation. So uh, the way I do this is um, uh, I start making start by making a chart or a table, I guess, um, over here. So we'll put the two responses to our mental health variable on the uh, vertical axis, and then we'll put the five possible responses to our population variable across the uh, horizontal axis. And then we're going to add these up here in a second. Adults, middle age, older adults. Uh, and sometimes just to keep myself organized, uh, since we don't have words in our in our data over here, uh, what I often like to do is just put a zero and a one, um, just to remind myself what the different variables are. Uh, and then so our next task basically is to fill in all of the people who answered a zero to this variable and a one to this variable. And we'll sort of repeat that for each of these 10 different categories of things. Now this is a little tedious, but let me show you how it is we do this. What we're gonna do is sort our data. 
So first things first, we are going to select all of the data. Okay, select it all. We go up to the Home tab up here, so you might have been somewhere else, but go up to the Home tab, and then we're going to go to Sort and Filter. Select Custom Sort, and what we get is this, uh, we'll get this dialog here. So this basically tells us what variable we're sorting on, uh, and then how we're sorting it, right? So we need to change this over to Mental Health, because we're going to sort by Mental Health first. We're going to sort smallest to largest. Then within mental health, we're going to sort again by population, right? Smallest to largest. And let me run this and then we'll take a look at what it's done here. Okay. So what this has done is this has put all of the zeros and ones together in our mental health variable. Then within this zero, it's put all, uh, within all the zeros for mental health, it's put all the ones for population together, right? Oh, I didn't mean to highlight it too there. It's put all the ones together. It's put all the twos together. It's put all the threes together and so on and so forth. So let me show you how, how easy it is to, uh, to sort of, um, sort of put all this together. First thing I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to hide these variables. I don't need them. Right, it uh, it makes the the traveling I have to do, you know, traveling across the spreadsheet a, a little bit uh, a little bit less. So, uh, first, all the people who answered zero to the mental health variable and yeah, and one to the population variable. Figure out how many that is. We could count it if we wanted to. Excel also tells us. I will show you where that is. Um, so I'll show you where that is. That's down here at the bottom, right? It actually computes some sort of summary statistics on each of these. So it gives us an average of, of the, the array that we've highlighted. It gives us a count of the number that we've highlighted, and it gives us a sum. In this case, the sum and the count are the same, but we're not interested in the sum. We're interested in the count. So we have eight people uh, in, in that category, people who answered zero to the mental health variable and one to the population variable. We have eight people again who answered zero to the mental health variable and two to the population variable, right? Now let's do the threes. How many do we have this time? This time we have six. So we have six people who answered zero to the mental health variable um, and, uh, and three on the population variable, right? Fours are next got five people who answered four. And we've got 12 people who answered five, right? Now we're going to do the same thing with all the people who answered uh, one to the mental health variable. So we have two people in this next category. That next category is people who answered uh, yes to the mental health variable and responded with a one to the population variable. We have 10 twos, 10 people working with adolescents. We have, oops, I highlighted a four, didn't mean to. We have four people working with young adults. What am I looking for next? Looking for the fours. We have 13 people working with middle-aged population. And then we have two people working with the older adults. Now, we want to check our math, see if we're right. We could. We could look at the sum. Uh, we could look at the sum of this row of people. Right, so we've got 36 people who answered zero. We've got 31 people who answered yes. We've got 31 people who answered yes to the mental health variable. Um, what total does that give us?
and I've made a mistake, right? So, so this is why we sort of double check our work. I've come up with 67 people in the, um, uh, or I've, I'm thinking there's 67 people in the data set, but I actually know there's 20. So I've, I've made a mistake here, right? So this is why we do this, right? And this is sort of what makes Excel so handy. So where did I mess up? So in the zero and one category, we have eight. In the zero and two category, we also have eight. In the zero and three category, we have six, not three. Okay, and that gets us up to 39, which would get us up to 69 and nope, which would get us up to 70, right? So that, that was my mistake. Uh, again, that's why we do this. That's why sort of Excel is, is so nice. Okay. So we know the different sizes of these categories. This is the first step in our, um, in our, in our chi square calculation. Um, so let me show you next how we calculate the chi square. First thing we have to do is recreate this table. Let me tell you why. So we're going to just copy and paste it. You can copy and paste it right below, but we have to take out the numbers that we put in here. And what we have to do is, is create basically a table for the null hypothesis. So this table is actually uh, helps us test our research hypothesis. What we need to do is now create a table that sort of helps us test our null hypothesis. So the chi-square assumes uh, or asks if there is um, there is essentially no relationship between the uh, or the chi-square asks what is the relationship between these two variables and our research hypothesis suggests that there is a relationship our null hypothesis would suggest that there's no relationship and so since this table up here tells us what the actual relationship is this we need to now create a corresponding table that says uh, what this would be if it were if it were sort of naturally occurring if if um, if there were no relationship between these variables and so what we need to do is redistribute these 70 people evenly throughout these different 10 categories so we need to redistribute these 70 people here evenly throughout this category right throughout these different categories so how do we do that there's 10 possible categories there's 70 people we need to put a seven in each of the 10 possible categories, right? So it should look like this, right? Very easy to do. You can just add, you can just add seven to all of those different things, right? This essentially lets us test the research hypothesis again with the null hypothesis, right? So we need a table for each of those. So the formula for a chi-square test equals C-H-I-S-Q dot T-E-S-T, -E right? open paren and then what it tells us is we need to highlight our actual range and our expected range so our actual range is up here our expected range is that table that we just created close paren there we go right so this returns a p value this returns a p value so in this case there actually is a very significant, there's a statistically significant relationship between these two uh, ordinal variables, okay? And we know that because the p-value here is less than 0.05. It's actually much less than 0.05. It's 0 0.000647. If we rounded that down to our two decimal points, as is our, our sort of uh, custom or tradition, we would still get 0, 0.00. So this is a statistically significant relationship. Uh, I will let you um, transfer this table over to uh, over to Word uh, and and sort of decorate it a little bit and and make it make it look nice, um, and then I'll let you do the do the interpretation for that. Um, let me just switch back over to our PowerPoint and we'll we'll come up with a couple of concluding comments. So okay, so here we are back at the chi square slide. Um, um, your results should be the same as mine since we're using the same data. Uh, just a couple of concluding comments. Um, remember that uh, a p-value doesn't tell us whether or not something's meaningful. It only tells us whether or not something is statistically significant. These are actually two different ideas, statistical significance and, and meaningfulness. 
and non-significant findings can be informative as well. Um, so, so for data analysis assignment two, again, that, uh, that code book and the Excel data is, is all on the module for this week. We did, uh, probably the bulk of the work, right? We did all of question C, a third of question D, and then, and then most of question F as well. And you can use a combination of, of syntax and, um, and the drop down menu. Again, you have questions. Give me a call. Get in touch with me. Um, we are here in week 13 right now, um, but if you remember week 14, there's nothing scheduled. So my thought was that the, the data analysis assignment would be due at the end of week 13, um, but we don't need to, um, we don't need to sort of rigidly adhere to that deadline. If you need into that week after, just let me know, shoot me an email, give me a call. Uh, I purposely designed the course so that we had that, uh, we had that extra week. Um, to get caught up on assignments, including the data analysis assignment. So, okay, good luck. Um, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Thanks for watching.